The primary, the primary reason for a business to exist is to make money. Putting yourself out as a financial expert and you're not, and you're just learning this shit. So for our bosses, we showed up at the time, didn't we? Yeah. But how come we get so lazy when it comes to our own? You come next to me, you're gonna need a bit of a wallet. Matter of fact, open up another bag. Thanks for taking me here. Where, where are we at, bro? Yeah, buddy, we're at the uh, Gold Leaf in Mooresville. Love it. Let's do it. Hey, G. Hi. <laughs> nice to meet you guys. Uh, we'll see you guys again. You guys have music. Thanks, folks. So, Matt, most of us here are uh, pretty new into the business. Uh -huh. The primary reason for a business to exist is to make money. I mean, every time, every time I'm having a conversation with my guys is how much money you making, how much money you making, how much money you making, because that'll validate your business and it's going to be easier for you to recruit. Like if I'm sitting with somebody and somebody says, "Well, how much money you making in your business?" I said, "Do you want me to tell you? Or want me to show you?" Show me. It's my paycheck for Monday and Tuesday. Cool, twenty-two thousand. <laughs> so, so the, the the number one the number one and reason a business will exist is to make money. Why? So the blood flow to a business is cash flow. Because then you can pay people, then you can invest in marketing, then you can get your office, then you can invest in advertising, then you can invest in so many other things. If the business can start growing its tentacles to grow, but it has to grow through cash flow. So I'm under, the number of responsibility, in my opinion, I might be wrong about this, but I'm always asking them, how much money are you making, how much money, matter of fact, that's the first question I asked you when you came to Chicago, how much money are you making? That is the number one thing. When people say, how's your thing going? Oh, my thing just paid me $22,000 last couple of years. How's your thing doing, your job? Oh, right, burn, right? And so, you want to take a look at what I'm doing, or do you want to stay stubborn? I mean, have, have you seen have you seen uh, the cost of a decent seat at an NFL stadium during a Sunday? It's like 800 bucks, 500 bucks, 800 bucks, and the stadiums are filled. So, so that's another thing. When people tell, when people say, "I ain't got no money," bullshit. You got money. You just don't think you need to apply it here because you don't think you can get something back. So let me break it down. I mean, 500 bucks return us 3.9 million dollars in four years. Was it worth the 500 bucks? Absolutely. Was it worth the Tuesday nights? Was it worth the Saturday mornings? Was it worth going to big events and conventions? 100. percent You know, so so that's number one. Number two is obtaining the skill set. All that difference is between entrepreneur to from employee to entrepreneur is skills. So here's here's the skills you, that everybody in our business has to master. Number one, you got to master your friendship to conversion skills. Okay. Second skills you guys got to master is financial skills. Understand the basic four homes of money we're talking about in the car. Master the basic four homes of money presentation. Master the five gotchas of money. I got an hour long video in the back office. Five gotchas of money. Three tax buckets. Tax now, tax later, tax advantage. Third one is leadership skills. And as I learned in the Marine Corps, the best way to set a leadership example is to set your own personal example. For example, showing up on time, being prompt. So for our bosses, we showed up at the time, didn't we? But how come we get so lazy when it comes to our own? Because you know why? Because you because when you're working for yourself, you work for the worst boss. Lack of discipline, perhaps? Correct. Like the shit we did in the Marine Corps, we wouldn't do that by ourselves. Like who wouldn't want to freaking march 10 miles up Mount Mother what's uh, Mount uh, the Grim Reaper with their own conscious mind at three o'clock in the morning? <laughs> who, 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 who in the right mind is gonna do that crap? Nobody. But you did it because you're part of the brotherhood. So so you, you guys gotta know tonight would not have happened without cooperative teamwork. And that's leadership skills. Which is something that Charlotte, North Carolina has gotta figure out what they're gonna do. Like Andre and Nate, you guys got to figure out what you guys are going to do. I think it's better for you guys to combine forces because when you invite people and there's only five people there versus ten, it's a much different paradigm, right? Competition, too. Co competition would be another part of it, right? You guys compete. Who's going to run the meeting? All right, Andre's leading. Next week, who's leading the meeting? Well, Nate's got better numbers this week. Okay, Nate's, lead, Nate's team is leading the East Coast, competes against West Coast, but we're still part of PHP, right? A stronger East Coast means a stronger West Coast. A stronger West Coast means a stronger East Coast. All together, we're PHP. See, there's camarader there's, there's competition and camaraderie there. The reason why Elginette Williams can come up here, because she trusts. She would not come up here if there wasn't trust. And it's easier to build trust, expanding your business and, and, and being an entrepreneur versus being an insurance agent and financial advisor. There's a couple of questions being asked to me tonight. So how should I prospect people at my union job? About three times, I said, don't do that, bro. Here's why. 
If you're prospecting people at your same job to be a financial client, why would they want to listen to you? No financial credibility. No financial credibility. So why are you holding yourself out as a financial expert and you're not, and you're just learning this shit? But people are more interested in you putting money in their pocket versus helping them manage the money in their pocket. They're not looking at you, you're not trying to dig in my wallet, are you? No, 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 I'm trying to add to your wallet. You need a bigger wallet. You come next to me, you're gonna, you need a bigger wallet. Matter of fact, open up another bag account. What, what advice would you give people that are like, doesn't have really that confidence to approach random people. And here's three ways to increase your confidence. There's three simple ways to increase your confidence. Number one, say please and thank you. Always have an attitude of gratitude. I know it's simple, right? I'll tell you what, every time I sit down and have a business lunch with somebody, I pay attention to how they treat the server. Because I used to be a server. <laughs> and I remember the jerks. I remember the people that didn't tip. I judge people based on how they treat people that they have no benefit from. I observe how people treat their staff. Right, so say, play, saying please and thank is important to increase your confidence. So you're not gonna find Marines smiling. We don't, we don't make our reputation by smiling often. That's for sure. But one thing the Marines ta taught us was etiquette. You're a warrior in uniform, but you're also, you're a gentleman. So if you wanna increase your confidence, say please and thank you. Second one, here's a tough one. Show up on time. And if you're on time, you're late. <laughs> right? If you're early, you're on time. So if Nate, Andre calls a shot, hey man, what time you guys start your BOM? 7 p.m. 7 p.m. So I'd be there at 6.15. I mean, I was a server at Olive Garden. We don't open the doors at 11 o'clock, but I had to be there at 10. Think about it real quick. We don't open the doors to serve food until 11, but I had to be there at 10 as an employee. So how come I'm not willing to do that as a small boss? Right? It's like, why wouldn't I do that for me? So show, showing the time is critical. You have a business meeting at 11. You, you, okay, I'm gonna meet you for lunch. You say 11 o'clock, you show up at 11.30. How does that person already feel about your business? They're not there. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, and that's how they feel about your business. Yeah, you ain't see it. You're not, you're not a professional. You don't treat your business professionally. You're not organized. By the way, I know I'm talking to, you know, multicultural here. They have this thing as uh, what, uh, color people time, Latino people time, Filipino people time. Hey, Jewish standard time. <laughs> 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 yeah. You know, you, you show up early, and the person you walk in, the person you show up early, the person you walk into, they show up late. Now, now, who's inclined to do business with you? You got the power position. You didn't even do anything. You haven't even opened open your mouth yet. They show up late, but you show up early. <laughs> yeah. You do that with a business lunch. Business lunch is 11 o'clock, 11.30, they show up 30, 30 minutes late, 20 minutes late. Guess who's buying? Guess who's catching up? They're trying to catch up to you. Also, showing up at time shows how much you respect the conversation, how much you respect your partnership, how much you respect your friends. It's funny, I, I started flipping my family for a loop. The, the family starts a party at five o'clock, I show up at 4.45. What are you doing? You said it starts at five. I know, I didn't think you'd show up at five though. They're still getting ready. <laughs> I haven't even cooked yet. All right. Well. So the third thing, how to increase your confidence. Do what you say. Whatever you declare, you follow through. I'm gonna make five grand this month. Great, make, make six grand. Watch how you feel about yourself, because people are flaky. You already know that, it's not business. I mean, think about it, you invite people to your birthday party. I mean, don't people like flake on you? You invite people to your wedding, do people still flake on you? I bought you a plate of food, you even show up to eat it. I had 100 people when they come to my senior recital, you know, 25, 30. See? So it's got nothing to do with PHP. It's not, it's not PHP, it's not you, it's people. So people put so much pressure on themselves thinking it's them. No, it's just people. John, he's a manager at a grocery store, so they're hiring people with pay, and people still don't show up for interviews. They hire them, they still don't show up. They come one or two days, they still quit. <laughs> That's why if you say yes to a job, you should say please and thank you, I, I appreciate it. I mean, think about it, if you suck as an employee, yeah. What makes you think you're gonna do great as an entrepreneur? <laughs> I mean, right. I mean, the way you treat people that fire you, it's, it's amazing. Everyone is a connection. Everyone is a connection. And you don't know when that connection will come. Is that called tap rooting? Tap rooting, friendship farming. Like what you guys should do here once a month is hold a monthly entrepreneurship collaboration networking meeting. Right, hey, hey guys, I mean, how much content do you guys get on a weekly basis from training from us? How much content do you guys get from Valuetainment? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys can, you know, you can have a monthly, uh, it's got nothing to do with PHP, right. but to add value to the business community here in Charlotte.